Hello friends, hi this is Dr. Shanali Chandra and I welcome you all to our YouTube channel Medicine Decoded. Now when we read our clinical textbooks, we read our clinical subjects, we see clinical patients, we are dealing with variety of clinical scenarios to name a few like heart disease, um, you know hemorrhagic shock, hypovolemic shock, where at times we feel the need that yes we should go back and strengthen our basics, remember the key important physiological concepts to make our clinical understanding better and that's why I've chosen to talk a little bit about cardiac output today. So what exactly is cardiac output? So we have a systemic circulation, right? And we have blood in our peripheral systemic circulation, which is perfusing the various tissues of the body. We have blood returning from the peripheral systemic circulation by way of the vena cavas to the right side of the heart. From there, the blood gets pumped to the lungs for oxygenation. And oxygenated blood returns to the left side of the heart, which is then pumped forward back into the peripheral systemic circulation by way of iota and its branches right so at any given point in time the heart is the pumping organ right and it is pumping at a specific rate which we call as the heart rate so let's say the heart rate is about on an average 70 beats per minute all right and similarly with each heart beat the heart is also pumping a specific amount of volume into the circulation and that is the stroke volume so we can simply say that the cardiac output is equal to heart rate multiplied by stroke volume that means that the amount of blood that the heart pumps forward over one minute is what is called as the cardiac output to put it in a more simplified manner, we can simply say that cardiac output is the sum of blood flows to all tissues of the body because whatever the heart is pumping at any given point in time is getting distributed into the peripheral systemic circulation. At any given point in time, there is a particular amount of venous return, blood that is returning to the heart that is getting pumped into the lungs and that is again oxygenated and getting pumped back into the systemic circulation, right? So whatever the heart gets in the form of venous return gets pumped forward in the form of cardiac output. So we can say that at any given point in time, the cardiac output should be equal to the venous return. Now applying the basic laws of physics that we studied uh, in our school days, if you have fluid in this situation blood flowing from point A to point B and we have blood flow here, so the amount of blood flow will depend upon the pressure difference between point A and point B, so we can call this the blood pressure and will be dependent on the resistance that is offered to the flow of blood across these two points. So we can say that the cardiac output is related to the blood pressure and the total peripheral vascular resistance. So having understood these two key points, we can say that if the venous return to the heart is increasing because of any means. If the increased venous return to the heart is happening, that is going to increase the pressure on the right side of the heart. Right side filling pressures are going to increase. That is going to cause a mechanical stretch also to the heart muscles. And as a result, yes, the heart is receiving more blood. So it needs to pump more blood forward as well. So with increasing venous return, the cardiac output will also increase. There are times when the tissues require more perfusion of blood. There is increased requirement by the tissues for blood flows. There is increased metabolic demands by the tissues and that can happen for a variety of reasons. And to meet these increased metabolic demands at the tissue level, the cardiac output needs to increase. So with increased metabolic demands at the peripheral tissue level, there is local vasodilatation and that local vasodilatation decreases 
the peripheral venous return. And when the peripheral venous return decreases as a result of that, the cardiac output increases. Digging a little deeper, the venous return to the heart determines the right-sided atrial pressures, right atrial pressures, right? So when the venous return to the heart increases, the right atrial pressures also increases. And with increasing venous return, the cardiac output also increases. To what extent? So let's have a look. With increasing venous return, the right atrial pressures are going to increase. And we can see that the cardiac output is given on the y-axis. So with increasing venous return, we see that the cardiac output increases to a certain maximum extent and then plateaus out. So the heart can increase the cardiac output to about 2.5 times the baseline because of increase in venous return. Situations where the heart beats more faster or the heart pumps more effectively when the cardiac contractility increases, the cardiac output can increase even further and we can call this a hyper effective heart and that can happen in situations with sympathetic stimulation like for example during periods of stress anxiety excitement right when there is sympathetic stimulation the heart rate increases the cardiac contractility increases and the cardiac output increases situations like parasympathetic inhibition or situations like increased workload on the heart like for example in marathon runners you know they train their heart to pump more effectively there is hypertrophy of the heart muscles right with increased workload on the heart the heart becomes a more effective pump as well so we see that in maintaining the cardiac output the venous return has a role to play the nervous stimulation to the heart has a role to play the workload on the heart has a role to play now the heart becomes a limiting factor in maintaining the cardiac output when the heart becomes diseased let's say for instance when it is not able to pump the venous return forward so we can have situation where the heart becomes hypo effective right the heart is not as effective a pump as it should be and the causes can be a variety of reasons like for example when the heart is pumping against an increased blood pressure severe hypertension uh, nervous inhibition to the heart and therefore the heart rate and the cardiac contractility have decreased dramatically like for example if the heart is having an abnormal rate or a rhythm you know and it is not beating effect effectively or when the heart is not perfused properly right like for example with coronary artery blockage or a variety of heart diseases for that matter myocarditis or for that matter ischemic heart diseases or for that matter valvular heart diseases by which the pumping effectiveness of the heart is compromised or like I said, even in cardiac hypoxia, like for example, if there is, uh, you know, a trauma patient who's losing a lot of blood, there is severe systemic hypotension and the shock has become uh, progressive, then maybe even cardiac hypoxia can lead to heart being hypo-effective as a pump and that will lead to decreased cardiac output. Now, I also want to highlight two situations, important ones, which we clinically encounter, where we find a high cardiac output because of a decreased peripheral vascular resistance, right? So, these two clinical conditions are hyperthyroidism and anemia. So, in hyperthyroidism, there is excessive thyroid hormone uh, production. And because of that, at the tissue level, there is an increased metabolic rate and that causes local vasodilatation and there co it causes an increased demand for the cardiac output and as a result of this vasodilatation the total peripheral vascular resistance decreases and the cardiac output increases.
in anemia whatever be the underlying cause of anemia there is decreased oxygen delivery to the tissues right so again at the tissue level there is vasodilatation in response to decrease oxygen delivery to the tissues and therefore the local blood flow into the tissues in a response to this anemia needs to increase right so local factors that are operating are governing the increase in cardiac output in both these situations where there is uh, hyperthyroidism and anemia we see the high cardiac output state is because of decreased total uh, systemic peripheral vascular resistance therefore any factor like for example these two situations where there is a chronically decreased total peripheral vascular resistance the cardiac output will be increased until unless the blood pressure falls too low until unless the blood pressure falls too low that even the venous return gets compromised because if the venous return gets compromised then the cardiac output decreases so now let's talk about low cardiac output when does the cardiac output become low so the cardiac output can be low or decreased when the heart itself becomes the limiting factor there is decreased pumping effectiveness of the heart or there is decreased pumping effectiveness of the heart so let's name a few conditions where the pumping effectiveness of the heart is decreased like for example in a variety of heart diseases like i told you coronary artery blocks or mi cardiac hypoxia myocarditis cardiac tamponade so these are certain examples of situations where the pumping effectiveness of the heart is decreased Another reason for encountering low cardiac output states can be because of decreased venous return. Another factor that is controlling the cardiac output is venous return. So if the venous return to the heart is decreasing, then the cardiac output will also decrease. Now we find this in situations like for example decreased blood volume. Now the blood volume could decrease for example in hemorrhagic shock because of blood loss or because of severe dehydration acute venous dilatation okay acute venous dilatation so much so that the total peripheral vascular resistance falls so much that there is a sudden hypotension and that decreases the venous return for example that we see in uh, fainting right so there is this vagal response because of which there can be a decreased venous return obstruction of large veins obstruction of large veins like the iliac uh, veins or the inferior vena cava by itself now the obstruction could be because of uh, an abdominal tumor right an abdominal lump and for example like we see in a pregnant uh, uterus a gravid uterus putting compression on the inferior vena cava can lead to decrease venous return and can lead to decrease cardiac output decreased tissue mass and particularly in relation to skeletal muscle mass because the skeletal muscles they take up a lot of uh, percentage of our cardiac output so like for example in chronically bedridden immobilized patients right where there there is muscle atrophy right so the metabolic requirement falls to an extent sometimes that can lead to decreased venous return and leads to decreased cardiac output and again yes decreased metabolic rate of tissues as well like for example uh, severe uh, hypothyroidism for example even with prolonged immobilization at bedridden patients there's a decreased metabolic rate of tissues which could contribute to decreased venous return and as a result decreased cardiac output also so to understand this in totality we have the heart that is our pumping organ it is pumping cardiac output forward that is perfusing the tissues and then from the tissues there is blood returning to the heart and that is the venous return so yes factors that are governing the cardiac output will be the requirement 
of perfusion that is there in the tissues or for that matter the local uh, factors like vasodilatation or vasoconstriction which are going to determine the venous return that are going to determine the total peripheral vascular resistance. The pump that is the heart is going to be governed by the nervous uh, stimulation the pump is going to be determined by the, the status of the heart in itself, if the heart is diseased or not, and then also the blood pressure against which the heart is pumping forward flow is going to determine the effectiveness of the heart as a pump as well. So a variety of factors govern the cardiac output uh, control and maintenance. Our body's tendency is to keep the cardiac output in the normal range. Our body's tendency is to meet the increasing requirements of perfusing the tissue. So under varieties of stressful situations, under the variety of examples that I gave you, our body has the capacity of increasing the cardiac output to an extent and the heart becomes a limiting factor in maintaining the cardiac output when it becomes diseased. If you understand these basic physiological concepts, understanding the diseased conditions in which the cardiac output is altered becomes easier.